Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Neon Kev. I'm your host, Kevin, and today we're going to be repairing an Anritsu MS2721B portable spectrum analyzer. So this is an instrument I bought in non-working condition, and one of the major problems I noticed was that the connector for the front panel board, which seats inside of this housing, was damaged. So you could not power on the instrument from the outside with the on-off button. And I had sent the board out to Northridge Fix for them to repair the rip pads on the connector. And today we're going to try to put this analyzer back together again and see if it works. So stay tuned. Questions. And if you look here, whoa. All I can say is, whoa. And what is this? We have how many missing pads? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 missing pads. Are you kidding me? Now, I've got the board back here from Northridge Fix. Haven't taken it out of the box yet. So we're going to unbox the repaired board, uh, take a look at that connector that was repaired, and uh, probably reinforce that connector. As a lot of people noted, um, it seems like a pretty fragile connector being surface mount with no other reinforcing features so i think the first thing we're going to do after we inspect it is to apply some neutral cure rtv to the board around that connector and what that should do is reinforce it mechanically so that it doesn't rip off again potentially now just to be clear i'm not the one who broke the connector all right i received the analyzer in this condition so i'm in the business of fixing these instruments. And uh, I'll put some pictures up. You can see that I've gone through a number of these uh, MS2721Bs specifically and done a lot of various repairs on them, electrical mostly. And, you know, this one I think is salvageable. A lot of them are typically destroyed beyond repair. So the MS2721B is used a lot in, um, was used a lot, I should say, in military applications. And when the government got rid of these analyzers, uh, they had to sanitize any data that was potentially on them. And you can see the way that they sanitize them, they basically ripped most of the components off of the boards. So a lot of MS2721Bs, while the RF portion, so the analyzer and tracking generator might be fine, uh, me mechanically the digital board, which is the board that we had repaired, would be destroyed beyond repair. You would have ICs ripped off, um, the compact flash where the system uh, operating system lies is also just brutally ripped out. And this board, surprisingly, the ICs were on them. Um, the only thing that was, was damaged was that front panel connector. So let's see if, uh, if fixing this front panel connector uh, will bring the entire unit back to life because it seems to be the only problem so far. All right, so this looks like the parts board. I believe so, yep. So we have the missing connector here that was removed. And then the good board that we're interested in is right here. And let's see where that connector is. So that's right here so let's zoom in on this area on the board and take a look at that connector all right so now i've got the board propped up here and this is the connector that was fixed i'll try to zoom in on this as best as i can and you can see it's a pretty clean repair and those traces are microscopic so i know a few people ask exactly how small are the traces um, I'll go grab the donor board and I'll try to make a measurement on that and let you know. All right, so I tried to freehand a measurement with calipers as best as that's going to work. And um, I think it's those traces are no wider than 0.2 millimeters. So you can imagine how difficult it is to actually do the pad strip restoral on this board. And as Alex noted in his video, you have these large uh, aluminum electrolytic capacitors here. In the way so when you're trying to get an iron into this area and actually work and reflow those joints it's especially difficult so 
thank you, Alex, again. I know this was not an easy repair, and hopefully uh, your efforts were not in vain, and we've uh, brought this instrument back to life. So what I'm going to do now is uh, very carefully just clean this area a little bit with 100% um, isopropyl alcohol, and then I'm going to apply some RTV silicone to the ends of this connector. And hopefully that will mechanically reinforce it as well. So we don't have to worry about it being completely ripped off the board again. As you can see, there are no uh, solder pads or lands or anything around this connector. So the only thing that's holding it onto the board mechanically are the tiny pads themselves. And um, I don't know if anybody from Anritsu is watching. Uh, not, not a great, great uh, <laughs> design, as a lot of people have noted. And if you come over here and actually look at where that connector mates in the, in the front panel of the instrument, it mates to these male pins, which then connect to the keypad on the unit on the front. So if that connector breaks, uh, it basically makes the instrument unusable. So we're going to go ahead and repair and reinforce the connector on the board. And um, hopefully when we reassemble this unit, it works. Okay, so I just finished cleaning up this connector very carefully, of course, to remove all the flux. And that's important for the prep that I did in order to apply some neutral cure RTV. So I'm going to apply RTV on the ends of this connector because it's so fragile and hopefully that will hold it down enough to safely install it. and if this board ever needs to come out again, uh, it won't take all the pads with it. So uh, I'm going to apply the RTV, let it cure carefully. While that's going, I'll just clean the rest of the instrument because it's very dusty. And uh, once that's cured and we're ready to reassemble, we'll be back. Okay, so now we're approaching the moment of truth. Everything's clean. The front cover is prepared. Board is reassembled, so the backlight inverter here is back on, the LCD is back on, and you can see our connector here. We have the RTV tacked on the top and bottom. Everything's clean, everything's ready, so let's go ahead and take this board and flip it onto the main case here carefully. And that's the connector of interest that has to mate. Okay, so we've got the board reinstalled in the analyzer, all screwed in. So before we go ahead and assemble the back half of the unit, I can actually power it on in this state and see if the front panel is responsive or not. Okay, so I've got the unit plugged into the power adapter here. Now the fault light is on because there's no battery installed, but it is blinking normally as it would in standby, and this is good. This didn't happen. Uh, because that connector was obviously missing. So it looks like the front panel is connected to some extent. Now, I haven't done a full functional test. This will be the first power up. I have Ethernet connected here because I'm probably going to have to reload the firmware uh, using the Enritsu Windows application. But first thing I'm going to do is just try powering on and see what happens. Okay. So the power button is responsive. That's good, that seems to be working. And what it's going to do now is try to boot up, but obviously the, uh, the spectrum analyzer portion of the instrument is not connected, so it's going to complain a little bit. Yep, couldn't find whatever, whatever, but looks like it's trying to boot. So what I can do now is go ahead and put it in, um, put it in bootstrap mode and reassemble the instrument and see if after we load the firmware back on there, uh, if the analyzer actually is going to work or not and we can test the front panel. All right, so I'm just going through the bootstrap menu to get the uh, firmware loaded up manually. And it looks like uh, the keypad and everything's working because I'm giving it an IP address right now just to, uh, just to connect to the computer. And you can see all the buttons are working. So that's good. It looks like uh, this unit might be fixed. All right, so we've got the firmware uploading right now through Ethernet. This is what Master Software Tools looks like. 
So this is the uh, emergency firmware recovery procedure and just give the instrument a static IP address, tell it where, tell the software where to find the instrument and it will load and install the firmware without actually having to boot. All right, so the firmware updated, the unit booted and it seems to be working. So we can, uh, in the system menu, run some tests. So we can do a self-test. Everything passes. I mean, obviously it wouldn't be able to check the front panel connector, but these are all the other system components that are non-RF related, I believe. And then if we go ahead, exit out of there and run the application self-test, that's going to test the spectrum analyzer. And then we can test the tracking generator as well. And it looks like that's complete. Almost, there we go. So yep, unit seems to be working. We can do some quick RF tests with a uh, signal generator and analyzer, make sure that the tracking gen is working, make sure that the spec gen itself is actually working. And uh, once that's complete, I think this unit is fully repaired. All right, so we've got the Enritu set up with an external signal generator and spectrum analyzer. And what we can do is test the function of this instrument. So we have the spectrum analyzer input to the Enritsu coming from an external signal source. And then we have the tracking generator output going to the other signal analyzer. So first we can test the basic spectrum analyzer function of the Enritsu. So we can generate an external signal. Right now I have the PSG signal generator here set to one gig at zero dBm. And you can see we're over here, we're reading approximately minus one dBm at one gig, 994 meg. So that's this little bit of loss is expected, of course, because no cable is perfect. And we can increase the frequency here up to seven gigahertz, which is the range of this instrument. I believe it's actually 7.1 is the upper limit, but let's go to two gigahertz and do another peak search. So marker is now at minus one dBm at two gig. And as we increase the frequency, of course, the loss uh, will go up in the cable. So the amplitude will drop a little bit. So three gig. Peak search, that looks good. So I think you get the idea. We can go all the way up to seven gigahertz and do a peak search there. And that looks good as well. So. Yep, uh, the spectrum analyzer is definitely functioning as expected. We can also go ahead and test the tracking generator. We go to the measure menu, go to the tracking generator, and turn that on. So now it's going to enable the tracking gen, and that's going to create a CW signal that's going to follow the sweep of the spectrum analyzer. So right now the sweep will be moving pretty quickly. Um, I'm just going to set the output to 0 dBm so we have a nice strong signal. And I'm going to slow the sweep down or actually change the span here. So we can go to, let's say, let's do a pretty narrow span. So we can do, um, say we start at 100 megahertz and stop at 200 megahertz, so let's do some low frequency to start with. And if we go over to our external spectrum analyzer here, start at 100 meg, stop at 200 meg, we can see the output from the Enritsu is there and it's tracking pretty nicely. And it seems to be pretty level around zero dBm as well. So let's make that a little bit larger or let's go to a higher frequency just so we make sure that at microwave frequencies things are functioning as expected so start at six gigahertz and stop at seven gigahertz and let's change the span again here start at six gig stop at seven gig and yep you can see we have a nice signal here too, and it's sweeping as expected. So 
I would say that the Enritsu is fixed and all the buttons seem to work. I haven't pressed the button that hasn't worked. So I think that connector is also fully repaired and this instrument has been saved. So thank you once again, Alex. Thank you all for watching and stop in next time.